Thank you for uh, joining in on the class. Uh, I did actually make notation of where I stopped last time, so I know where to start. But before we do, let's uh, have a short word of prayer. Found me, please. And the Father, bless this study of ours and in which we learn more of our will uh, to us. We're grateful for the technology that allows us to join uh, my computer and for the many helps that we have uh, through such means to learn more of thy word. But it is thy wisdom that we seek to attain. And we pray that this uh, short study may uh, carry us along that path. Thank you for Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Last time I, I, I stopped was uh, Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 5. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon my uh, <clears throat> congestion, but such is life. Uh, Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verses six through 10, uh, deals with the uh, symbolic services of the tabernacle and its insufficiency. In Hebrews, uh, the ninth chapter, verse six, it reads, uh, when these things have been uh, thus prepared, that there was enough detail uh, given previously to make these make this point. The priest also went into the first part of the tabernacle performing the services, but of course only the high priest could go into the second part, which is the Holy of Holies. <clears throat> in verse 7 it says, but into the second part, the high priest alone once, went uh, once a year as the Day of, of Atonement. Uh, you can look at Leviticus chapter 16. Uh, but he didn't do it without blood. He had to uh, offer blood for himself and, and, and so forth. So, uh, and you might imagine that the fact that he just went in there once a year <clears throat> is a very special occasion and, and uh, may have been somewhat frightening. Maybe, I don't, I don't know, but it was a place that no one went except the high priest once a year. But he had to offer uh, blood uh, for himself and also for the people's sins committed in ignorance. I might just point out that there were no offerings for sins uh, committed uh, presumptuously, that is, willingly engaged in, you know, full knowledge of what you're doing. There's no offering for that. <clears throat> in verse uh, 8, it says, but the Holy Spirit uh, indicating this and did this by types and shadows. Uh, of course, the word, the entire Bible, Bible is a revelation by the Holy Spirit. And that's the sword of his spirit. And you might also look at uh, 2 Peter uh, verse uh, 121, knowing uh, interpretation came by man said the uh, Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all, the Holy of Holies, uh, the spiritual Holy of Holies, was not yet, uh, yet made manifest while the first tabernacle uh, was standing. And uh, you know, the first tab tabernacle was but a, just, it's just a shadow, a type. But the spiritual tabernacle, uh, the antitype would soon come along and it stand alone. You might uh, compare this with the greater and more perfect tabernacle of uh, verse 11. We'll get to that. <clears throat> Prior to Christ entering the Holy of Holies, the uh, way there too was not manifest to man. They, they just, they didn't know how all this was going to work out. No man, no man understood how God could be a just God and still justify man. They just couldn't work it out in their mind. But uh, when Christ died for mankind and offered his blood as the atoning sacrifice uh, for our sins, then all was uh, made manifest. It became clear. Uh, you know, that uh, verse in first, uh, uh, Second Peter, verse 121 says, that prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy man of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. 
in verse uh, nine, it was symbol symbolic. It was symbolic. Uh, the earthly tabernacle was just a figure or a symbol of the good things of heaven. As you know, the law was our tutor schoolmaster, schoolmaster Galatians 3.24. He was never made to be a permanent. It was symbolic for the present time. Uh, you know, we're no longer under a tutor or schoolmaster in which uh, gifts, both gifts and sacrifices are offered. They still, they were still being offered at the time of this writing. It was shortly before AD 70. So the uh, sacrifices and offerings of the temple are still going on. He said, when, in which both the gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot uh, make him perform the service perfect. So all, even though they're still, well, they never were able to make the person offer these things perfect. These uh, gifts and off, offerings uh, put them in good standing on the old law, but the old law is going away. It was always, never, and only a shadow. Never intended to be permanent. Said it uh, cannot make him who performed the, the services perfect. In fact, he could not uh, perfect anyone. In it says in regard to the conscience. <clears throat> in Hebrews, the tenth chapter, the tenth verse, said. Uh, Talking about these things concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings, and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of Reformation. All these things were temporary until the whole mosaical system was replaced. That is, the, the old covenant was abolished and then replaced with the new covenant. <clears throat> In verses 11 through 14, uh, it talks about Christ appearing as the high priest of the new covenant. It entered through a greater and more perfect tabernacle into the heavenly sanctuary. Uh, he did, and not with the blood of bulls and goats, but with his own blood. Thus, uh, Christ's ministry is superior. Verse 11, it says, but Christ came as high priest of the good things to come. Uh, types and shadows were no longer necessary. He's the real thing. Now, the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. And it has to be referring to the church, Ephesians 2, uh, 19, verse uh, 22. It says, now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being created together grows into a holy temple of the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me says, but not of this uh, creation with a greater, more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation. It was not an earthly tabernacle, but a spiritual tabern tabernacle. <clears throat> the old law had an earthly tabernacle, but the new had a spiritual tabernacle that was greater and perfect. Christ's kingdom was not of this world John 18, verse uh, 36. <clears throat> In the 12th uh, verse of chapter 9, it says, not with the blood of goats and calves. You, you recall under the uh, old law, many sacrifices were, were required over and over again. But the sacrifice of Jesus was only once. So it says, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, uh, and it's just not, you know, of course, under sacrifice, an animal had to die. But it wasn't Jesus' death only, it was his blood also. He entered uh, the most holy place. The entrance was granted only 
by the shedding of blood into the Holy of Holies. So he entered uh, entrance is granted by the shedding of blood, both the old under the old law and under the new. He said the most holy place, once for all, one sacrifice was required. That was his sacrifice having obtained the eternal redemption as a ransom. He didn't ransom himself, but he ransomed us. The high priest of the old law entered the Holy of Holies by means of the blood of animals for his sins and the sins of the people. But Christ entered the heavenly Holy of Holies by means of his own blood, therefore obtaining, obtaining high redemption. It says, you know, their sins and their lawless deeds, I'll, I'll remember uh, no more. You might look back at uh, verses, chapter 8, verse 12, and, and we'll look forward at chapter 10, verse 13 later. <clears throat> In verse 13, but if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh. And he's going to, in 14, talk about how much more, but, you know, the water, the purification was uh, prepared from the ashes of a heifer, kind of mixed them together, which water was used to clean all who were symbolically defiled. Now, if the ordinances of a carnal institution could qualify the high priest into the Holy of Holies, of the law, then we get down to verse 14. How much more, and that's an argument from the lesser to the greater, how much more shall the blood of Christ, the, uh, you know, we know the blood of Christ, which would uh, wash away sins, it was superior to the blood of and ashes of animals, which could not, shall the blood of Christ, who, although through the eternal spirit, and therefore, the offering of his uh, of himself was it was on a higher plane than the animal offerings. Through the eternal spirit, he offered himself without spot. And it says, you know, because of that, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. That makes us meet for the master's use, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. The blood of Christ was offered just once, but continues to cleanse. It cleanses us even today. The blood of bull and goats had to be offered time and time again, since such were only uh, temporary and symbolic. <clears throat> such did, however, show the polluting nature of sin. In verses 15 through 24, we have there the inter internal, eternal inheritance secured for the call and faithful of all ages through the death and mediation of Christ. In verse 15, it says, and for this reason, that's uh, on account of the foregoing, he is a mediator. You might look back at uh, chapter 8, verses 6 and 8. He is a mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant. First covenant could not save. Redemption of those under the first covenant required a sacrifice, that is, a death and shedding of blood that can cleanse one from sin regardless of age in which they live. The sacrifice was Christ. <clears throat> you might uh, note that uh, we read in the uh, third chapter of Romans, I uh, think 25, that the blood of Christ cleansed under both covenants. It says that uh, those who are called, call that's called by the gospel, Second Thessalonians, second, second chapter, verse 13 and 15, those who are called by the gospel may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. <clears throat> Of course, you have to uh, respond to the gospel's call to be, enjoy the benefits of it. 
So before any could uh, rightfully claim salvation through sanctification as their own, the covenant uh, through which it has been divided had to be sealed and ratified by the blood of Christ, Jesus Christ. This is what the writer now proceeds to illustrate uh, by uh, one, the analogy of a will or testament, and two, by the example of the old covenant. <clears throat> In the 16th verse of chapter nine, it says, for where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament, verse 17, for a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Now we understand this from civil law respecting inheritance. Uh, it's also the case with an eternal inheritance, uh, verses 15. Anyone may change his will while alive, but the terms of the will are fixed after his death. Uh, legal rights of bequest and heirship are declared under the will and immutably established by the death of the testator. Likewise, it was not until the, the new covenant was established by the death of Christ, Colossians 2.14, and ratified by his blood that one could claim, as we now do, an absolute right to an eternal inheritance. In verse 18, therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. The Old Testament was but a type of the new. Both were dedicated by blood. Uh, indeed, neither the old nor the new covenant could be ratified without blood. <clears throat> In verse 19, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, and you might uh, look at Exodus, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 8. He took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. In verse 20, saying, this is the blood of the covenant, which God has commanded, that is, enjoined upon you, commanded you. The covenant, the old covenant, could not be entered into without blood. These covenants are not between equals. Uh, one part of God is superior to the other man and therefore uh, to the other, which is man, and therefore God has the right to command or enjoin. In verse uh, 21, it says there, uh, like, there then likewise, he sprinkled the blood, blood both the tabernacle. You might look at uh, Exodus uh, 40th chapter, verses nine through 11 in all the vessels of the ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Under the law, the old law, almost all things were purified by means of blood. Every sin required an, an atonement and no atonement could be made without blood. <clears throat> In verse 23, it says there, therefore it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices, that's Christ, with better sacrifices than these. The priest, uh, furniture, and the tabernacle itself would be unclean unless purified by blood. Therefore, there would have been no covenant without the shedding of blood. The new covenant promised a heavenly tabernacle superior in every respect to the earthly tabernacle. So it had to be ratified by the blood of one superior, superior to the blood of bulls and goats. And that, of course, was Christ. <clears throat> for Christ, in verse 24, for Christ had not entered the holy place made with hands. That's the earthly holy place or, or most holy place, which are copies of the true, but in the heaven itself, that's where he entered the spiritual or heavenly holy of holies. He entered into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. 
can we read from uh, uh, Romans 8, 24? I think we read before. Uh, Jesus is at the right hand of God and makes intercession for us. <clears throat> In Hebrews uh, 9, chapter verses 25 through 28, 28 he, uh, the writer further illustrates the differences between the Levitical service and those rendered by Christ as the high priest of our confession. It says in verse 25, not that he should offer himself often as a high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. Uh, again, keep in mind the old covenant required many sacrifices. Each year on the day of atonement, the high priest entered the most holy place for the sacrifice of blood. <clears throat> in verse 26, it says, he then would have had to suffer often that he is the Christ since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Christ uh, never <clears throat> entered the most holy place in the earth of the tabernacle. He couldn't do it because he was not uh, the family of Aaron or the tribe of Levi. <clears throat> If the heavenly tabernacle was like the earthly tabernacle, if Christ were like the high priest under the mosaical system, he would have had to sacrifice himself again and again every year. But he uh, ushered in a superior covenant in which he offered himself once for all time for all people. The high priest of old did not offer their own blood that of animals. Christ offered up his own blood, which makes it a superior sacrifice. And verse 27, it is appointed for men to die once, <clears throat> but after this, the judgment. High priest had to make an offer, offering of an innocent, of innocent blood for himself and for the people once a year. And he had to do it again every year because of the repetitive defilement of sin. Not so with uh, Christ, however. All men, including Christ, died. So we all will die, physical death. Upon death, one's proper place in the judgment is certain, John 12, 48. For it says, therefore, he who rejects me and does not receive my words as that which judges him, the word that I have spoken will judge him in that last day. <clears throat> in verse 28, it says, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, not for his own sins, because he, he didn't have any sins, but for the sins of mankind. And we read that from Isaiah uh, 53rd chapter verses four through six it says therefore surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken spent by God and inflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his uh, stripes we are healed and we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the, the uh, iniquity, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. <clears throat> so he was offered once for the sins of many. <clears throat> to those who eagerly await, wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. And <clears throat> might uh, read Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 15 through 22. Uh, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord uh, Jesus, and of course, I think the writer here is appealing to their faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love for all the saints, uh, do not uh, cease to give thanks. I do not cease to give thanks for you make it mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being 
enlightened, you know, the light of Christ, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, which are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. <clears throat> For above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things in the church. And it says in 1 Peter, the third chapter, verse 22, talking about uh, Christ is, who is going into heaven and is at the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers have been made subject to him. And chapter 10, uh, verses 1 through 4, we're going to talk about the utter moral inefficacy of the Levitical offerings. But since it's almost the bottom of the hour, I think I'll defer this until next time, which will be July 5th, I believe. So thank you for your kind attention and uh, your attendance. And uh, please excuse my uh, congestion, if you will. Thank you. Good night.